Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Yoshihiro Hidaka. Thank you very much for joining us today. Let's get started with the presentations on the long term vision and the new medium term management plan covering fiscal 2019 to 2021. First of all, I will explain about the long term vision and the outline of the new medium term management plan, which will be followed by the presentations on the new medium term management plans by business given by the chief and executive general managers responsible for the business, respectively. Since the foundation of the company in the motorcycle business, under the name of Kando Creating Company, our universal corporate objective, we have been growing by creating new values. Moreover, we have had the proud tradition of the fusion of technology and sensitivity, where de delivering the sensitivity of a composer to the audience through the technologies of the performer. We call the methodology of intertwining technology and sensitivity to generate Kando, an art of engineering, which has been the foundation for Kando felt by each of the customers, and that will remain unchanged going forward. People's values are expected to become increasingly diversified around the world, and the global environmental and social issues to become more serious and complicated. But at the same time, exactly because there will be further advances in AI and information society, it will become even more important to touch people's sensitivity. We're hoping to apply more than ever the technologies and sensitivities to what is designed to get closer to humans and to expand human possibilities, thereby responding to the needs of society through approaches characteristics of a company. And that is the passion behind the phrase art for human possibilities, which we came up with. As I said, We want to strongly focus on human beings again and want to get closer to them. I would like to broaden the possibilities human beings possess in terms of technology and sensitivity. We will advance the use of robotics, rethink solutions, and transform mobility and expand the human possibilities for a better society and more fulfilling life. With the art for human possibilities as an objective, we're going to promote reforms ahead of 2030. Now, let us explain about the specific initiatives of art for human possibilities or mid to long term growth strategies. As indicated by the long term vision that I explained earlier, our focus areas are the following three. The first is transforming mobility. Second, rethinking solution. We'll address issues through initiatives in the Yamaha unique style. And third is advancing robotics or intelligent technology as a foundation. We will strengthen those three areas as we move closer to 2030. We have classified the specific themes we will promote in those areas into four quadrants. From the perspectives of the technology and the market. In the existing market and technologies, we will expand the market through fusion of presently available products and new technologies while at the same time exploring inorganic growth opportunities. In the area of new technologies, we will promote electrification of mobility, sharing, and system supplier strategies of marine business. If necessary, We'll be proactively engaging collaboration and co creation with like minded partners with the same future business directions. In the area of new markets, we hope to provide new values through combinations of the technologies we already own. We want to open new markets in the areas such as agriculture, medical field, and autonomous driving. Furthermore, by leveraging funds and MAs proactively, We will pursue the acquisition of technologies and inorganic growth not bounded by the conventional framework of our company. We do not have any intention to allocate resources to completely new areas where there are no synergistic effects expected with our existing technologies and markets. We are determined to invest resources only in the areas that have some connection in terms of technologies or extension of markets. 
Let me now explain about the specific themes in each of the three areas of art, ART. First, in the area of transforming mobility, in addition to what we have nurtured so far, growing world of personal mobility, our electric products already in the market, and unique style R&D, by combining the R&D in the technological areas currently focused on, we will seek new Yamaha unique style proposals for small size mobility that can contribute to the resolution of social issues. For example, that would include providing peace of mind and comfort by offering products hard to tip over, mitigating traffic congestions in cities with small footprint human size mobility, and helping mitigate global warming by reducing greenhouse gas emissions through promotion of electrification of power trains. Moreover, by advancing technological development in autonomous driving and connected cars, we are hoping to provide mobility to everyone at low cost so that we will be able to eventually help provide the infrastructure that can play the role of the last one mile of society. In transforming mobility, LMW is all about delivering fun to our customers. LMW stands for Leaning Multi-Wheel, or vehicles with three or more wheels that lean to turn just like motorcycles do. Here you can see our product lineup for Lean Multi-Wheel. Since the launch of Tricity in 2014, we have continued our R&D efforts and successfully launched Nikon, or a large size sport type LMW recently. In the motor show held in Milan in November, we unveiled 3CT, a 300cc model. Going forward, we will continue to offer models that can realize peace of mind, comfort, and fun simultaneously to expand our lineups and customer base. Now let me move to the essentials of transforming mobility, the control technologies. As part of the efforts to develop control technologies, we have pursued two different approaches, motorbot, or motorcycle riding robots, and motoroid, AI motorcycle capable of automated driving. Moving forward, we will make sure whatever values we provide will always be about people-focused technologies and draw a future vision for motorcycles by incorporating diverse advanced technologies not limited to control technologies. Through those development efforts, we want to take a fresh look at the fundamental values of everyone being able to ride with peace of mind and comfort so that we can create mobility that can appeal to the human sensitivity at the level never seen before. Let me now explain about EV area where we must be present in transforming mobility. As you can see, in the area of low output, small mobility, our company has already been selling various electrified products and we have confidence in our technologies in this area. We anticipate the environment surrounding the internal combustion engine products to be even more challenging and in the overall accelerating shift to electrification, we will continue to offer products characterized by Yamaha unique style. So I would say stay tuned for Yamaha electrification products to come in the future. Next, I would like to explain about rethinking solution. First, on low-speed autonomous operation systems. In some mountainous areas in Japan, the public transport system is no longer functioning, and social issues, especially related to mobility of elderly people, are manifesting themselves. With land cars used as a basis, and with our eyes on future autonomous driving, we will provide low-cost last-mile mobility solutions. We believe that with low-speed autonomous driving, we will be able to realize low-cost mobility solutions as we can reduce the degree of infrastructure dependency and operational risks. Moreover, by enhancing the flexibility of platforms to be able to be used for all purposes, Mobility services, not just for passengers, but also for cargo, can be realized, which in turn will help solve diverse social issues such as depopulation, aging population, and labor shortage. We will take on slow mobility-centered community building as a theme for our activities, including not just low-speed autonomous driving vehicles, 
but also motor-assisted bicycles and electric wheelchairs so that we can also engage in revitalization of local communities. As we develop more sophisticated skills in community building activities, we can create contents that can be exported to other countries expected to face similar social issues, thus making it one of the strengths of Japan as an advanced nation with social issues such as aging. I'd like to discuss rethinking solution in the marine field as well. We'd like to turn the marine life of customers into experiences with even more peace of mind and comfort by leveraging latest technologies. Currently, through products, we are letting customers enjoy the benefit of the sea, such as cruising and fishing. But the captain often has to play multiple roles, including lookout, engine driver, and steersman, and therefore cannot enjoy himself or herself fully. We'd like to solve those problems one at a time, leveraging our technological capabilities. For example, you can set the coordinate of the destination and let the ship cruise auto autonomously. Once you get to the fishing ground, you can keep the coordinate there and enjoy fishing. We'll work to realize a marine life where anyone can maneuver the ship just like a professional would, and the person maneuvering the ship can relax and enjoy himself or herself together with passengers. Next, let me move to advancing robotics, first on agriculture. At present, especially in fruit and vegetable farming industries in developed countries, the labor shortage has emerged as a serious issue and has become an urgent matter for those countries. In California, U.S., where we have pesticide spraying business, labor shortage has been threatening the sustainability of agriculture there. Our unmanned helicopters have been used in the agricultural market in Japan for over 30 years with experiences accumulated and therefore have the potential to help solve those problems. With new drones launched and unmanned ground vehicles to be launched in the future, we hope to expand the scope of work and crops to be covered and contribute to labor saving and productivity improvement in agriculture. Furthermore, we will take advantage of the synergy from the collaboration with NVIDIA of U.S., which we announced the other day, so that we can accelerate the development of those unmanned solutions. Some projections indicate that the global agricultural robot and drone market, driven mainly by the labor shortage, has the potential to be worth as much as 4 trillion yen, and we are determined to take on the challenge of achieving a great leap in our business. Next, I'd like to take up the theme of medical business. The cell handler is a product generated by leveraging the pick-and-place technology of surface mounting equipment. It was launched in the domestic market in 2017 and started to be sold in other countries in the second half of 2018. The cell handler can be helpful in the clinical fields of personalized medicine, therapeutic antibodies, and drug discovery support business. We believe that in various steps in drug discovery, it can help reduce the workload of researchers and improve productivity significantly, thereby accelerating the drug discovery process and ultimately enhancing the probability of success in drug discovery. We will not limit ourselves to selling the device, but hope to see if the solutions business, including outsourcing via taking stakes in startup companies, are viable in order to take on the challenge of making inroads into the market with a potential of 3 trillion yen. We established a new business location in Silicon Valley in 2015 called Yamaha Motor Ventures and Laboratory Silicon Valley, or YMVSV. YMVSV has been engaged in business development using the ecosystem in Silicon Valley designed for exploring and growing themes to develop new business, promote commercialization, and develop new business models. Since then, it has invested nine startup companies with a total of $47 million U.S. It also contributed to clarifying Yamaha's growth strategies, especially in the area of agricultural robotics. Furthermore, in order to further accelerate the activities designed to realize the long-term vision, we launched our own fund, Yamaha Motor Exploratory Fund, in November this year. It is a fund expected to be worth $100 million with an operation period of 10 years. From a global perspective, it is expected to accelerate the strategic investments in early-stage startup companies.
in each of the areas I mentioned so far will not operate alone, but will work with partners who empathize with our vision to accelerate the innovation to provide even higher values. In robotics in September, we announced that we would engage in joint development with NVIDIA. The technologies developed through this partnership are planned to be applied first in UGV, unmanned ground vehicles, for agriculture, expanded applications of industrial drones and PPM, public personnel mobility. And we also hope to expand the applications to include existing business areas such as active safety in motorcycles, unmanned small automated observation boats, and unprogrammed industrial robots. In mobility area, in September, we announced that we will co commence exploring the possibilities of collaborative work with a Taiwanese company, Gogoro Inc., in EV business. This collaboration is about the development and manufacturing outsourcing of electric scooters for Yamaha and sharing of the battery swapping system. We believe it will help us expand the options in mobility for customers in Taiwanese market and attempt to provide new mobility services and create new markets by sharing the advanced battery swapping system. Moreover, in November, we announced that we have commenced a usability study for electric-assisted bicycles in India, together with an India-based major bicycle manufacturer, Hero Cycle, as well as Mitsui and Company. This collaboration is designed to verify the feasibility of electric-assisted bicycles business in India based on the survey on the different regulations and consumer preferences in India. We will continue to pursue the creation of values through co-creation and collaborations like the ones mentioned. In the process of narrowing down the mid- to long-term growth themes that I mentioned so far, we are always keenly aware that we would need to contribute to solving social issues in the Yamaha unique style. We identified four important social issues that we as Yamaha Motor Company need to address. First, on issues related to environment and resources, we have set the goal of a 50% reduction in product CO2 emissions by 2050. We already produce and sell a lot of electric products, but will further seek electrification to achieve this goal. Furthermore, we will continue to work to provide supply safe water to as many people as possible through our clean water business. Next is about transportation, education, and industry. In order to address these issues, mainly in African countries, we are not just sell selling outboard motors, but we also teach how to fish to contribute to their fishery business. And regarding transportation, we provide the low-cost mobility service based on land cars to provide solutions to senior citizens' mobility issues, mainly in the mountains. Regarding innovations, we propose a new style of mobility such as LMW, while we also accelerate the collaborative innovations. Regarding work-life balance, we will further reinforce the use of, of female workers, also globalization, in order to promote diversity so we can improve the performance as the business. So that was all for our mid- and long-term growth strategies. Now I want to move on to explain our new mid-term management plan. In pursuit of 2030 long-term vision, we have set plans for the first three years until 2021. I will go over the overview of the plan, then each business will be explained by the respective responsible members. Before touching on a new midterm plan, let me recap on the current midterm plan. Unfortunately, uh, we failed to achieve the original target of 2 trillion yen in net sales and 180 billion yen in operating profit. We saw weaker demand in Indonesia and weaker sales in, in ROV uh, resulted to underachieve the top line. We also failed to be profitable in the motorcycle business in developed countries. Regarding profitability, 
we promoted a platform strategies in ASEAN motorcycle business, and we conducted cost reductions in various businesses, in marine robotics, electric-assisted bicycle business, such high-margin business sales grew, and that resulted to see improvement in operating profit margin to reach 9% level. This also helped to improve our financial base to be at a stable level, allowing us to reach 15% on the average for three years and for return on equity. And we also reached 45% equity ratio or went beyond that. And we have been increasing dividend for three years in a row as part of shareholder returns. In order to develop technologies for growth, uh, we uh, worked on Three focus areas, as you see in this current midterm plan, uh, we introduced attractive advanced models into the market. In this new midterm management plan, once again, we want to try 2 trillion yen and operating profit of 9% level. Regarding net sales, uh, we intend to grow existing business by 325 billion yen. In motorcycle business, uh, in the emerging market, where market growth is expected for the coming three years, such as in the Philippines, India, and ASEAN countries, we intend to grow our strong businesses. In marine and robotics, we will develop and introduce new products and offer total solution with the new technologies to realize a sustainable growth. At the same time, although the size is still small, but we have a uh, Businesses for growth, such as growing personal mobility and finance service, uh, where we expect to grow by 25 billion yen. Regarding operating profit, uh, we first rebuilt the motorcycle business in a developed countries and RV, which we struggled this year. In addition, uh, we will further expand the cost reduction efforts which are undergoing. So we intend to reach 180 billion yen and 9% OP margin while increasing growth strategy spendings. Next is on financial strategies. Basic policy for financial strategies is to maintain an ability to generate profits in existing businesses and to increase investment for new growth and shareholder return within our cash flow in a balanced manner. The left bar chart is showing the current midterm management plan. The right bar chart is the new midterm management plan. Among those two continuous charts, the left is showing the depreciation and net income. The right is showing the investment, working capital, and shareholder returns in others. And these are the numerical targets uh, towards the bottom of the page. Equity ratio is set slightly higher in order to make flexible investment for future growth and not to affect the business even under some risks. In order to accelerate the growth than the current midterm plan in a new three midterm plan, uh, we allocated 70 billion yen for R&D and 140 billion yen for investment for the coming three years in total. Uh, but such resource allocation for growth must be within our cash flow and must be balanced with shareholder return. We also intend to expand financial service business by leveraged funding strategies. Financial services business. We intend to further uh, reinforce the connection with the customers and to ensure a stable earnings, we will further promote a financial service business. In the current midterm plan, uh, we have uh, built the business operation platforms after starting to offer the financial services in the US, Canada, Australia, and Brazil. The currently, the receivable balance has grown to be around 300 billion yen. In the new midterm plan, we intend to go into the new regions. Also, we expand into non-finance business to reach a receivable balance of 450 billion yen. But we also offer attractive services with a focus on convenience for the customers. As we see expansion of the financial uh, receivable size, 
In the uh, first year of the new midterm plan, we will disclose this uh, business as the financial service business as the new segment. That is all from me. Now moving on to explanation by each business areas. So uh, let me take the floor. I will go over the land mobility, which covers motorcycle, RV, and assisted bicycle centered SPV businesses. Starting with land mobility. The midterm team theme for land mobility is to build a base uh, to address the new era of mobility. This new era of mobility uh, means we see technology changes and we see regulation changes to address environmental issues and we are seeing the changes in values against the lifestyles and the mobility will be updated and that's what we call as a new era of mobility. In order to address these changes, uh, we have assumed where we want to be at in 10 years and we have planned backward to set the first three years. And then we position this midterm as the time to build the base for that new era. And we have uh, set up the following three themes. First, updating the existing capabilities. Number two, agile management. Number three, shift to new areas. Let me explain the narratives. In order to address the upcoming changes, first we will rebuild the existing capability we have or we even acquire necessary capabilities from outside of the company. And we optimize them for the whole company to be able to uh, make the agile judgment in running the business. And then we uh, will have the capabilities which becomes more efficient that will be also shifted to generate uh, the new values. So the business target in the following three years would be 1.35 trillion yen in the net sales, 92 billion yen in the operating profit. And we expect the return on sales to go up by 1.5 percentage point to be 6.8%. As you can see in the bar chart, the OP grew by 12.6 billion in emerging markets, 9.8 billion in developed countries, and 6.7 billion in RV, in total 29.1 billion yen. And out of 32 billion yen improvement, roughly 90% is coming from these areas. And especially, uh, we generated uh, improvement of margin, mainly in in motorcycle business, and we also increase per unit profit amount, and will continue to stay efficient to realize such improvement. And we will further reinforce where we are strong at right now, uh, to further reinforce our earnings resources for the mid and long term perspective, uh, to uh, aim to reach generating cash also to grow the acquiring uh, profit amount. For that, we consider emerging market, including ASEAN, to be the core business area. So they will take on the majority of improvement of earnings. Then developed countries will be going through the structural reforms to improve by 10 billion yen. And let me explain more details by different business segments. Starting with a motorcycle business in the developed countries. Within a developed country business, uh, basically it, uh, we're not performing well since the Lehman Shock uh, crisis. But currently the current market, uh, the brands and products are globally connected. We see new technologies being developed such as EVs and IoT and a new mobility system is expected. Under such uh, conditions, the products developed within developed countries will be bearing three missions and they remain to be the same. Number one, update the values by developing new technologies. Number two, a challenge a new business model under maturing market. Number three, embody the Yamaha branded DNA to build a global branding synergy. And we have phrased this as continue to update the unique style of Yamaha with new technology development and embody brand as you see at the very top. For the new era of mobility that we are facing, uh, we will continue to generate a new mobility and we will challenge that as the business in the market. 
We believe that is to contribute to the future of mobility. But this is a business. We will also update the structural problem that we've had for many years before the new era comes into place fully. So we need to improve our business structure. And we have set out improvement targets here. We will work on structural reform in global manufacturing and sales functions, and we will improve the expenditures. And there are other items. In total, 9.8 billion yen improvement that will be executed in this coming midterm. And in addition, there are two growth themes. One is LMW, to develop a market as a new mobility and to expand the mid- and large-size motorcycle business in emerging market which are growing in the future. And another thing is the peripheral business, which are currently offered um, as a set of the machine business, but we define this as a total business, then we can grow this further more. Both structural reform and market creation, there is no ending for them since markets are changing. But uh, we are looking at a 10-year long-term uh, vision, and we want to take actions even beyond 10 years. And next is RV business, mainly focused on developed countries. So we try to uh, grow market share in this midterm for ROB in North American business. So from the last year of previous midterm into this midterm, we introduced mo new models into both sport and recreational categories. However, we uh, failed to reach the original plan in both areas. So that was because we uh, failed to understand what the real customer values were, and we could not create the value to meet such values. So now we include this RV business under the motorcycle business to reinforce the planning, development, and cost development f functions. Under this condition, now we will develop a platform to be able to offer a competitive values and products within this coming midterm. And since we failed to achieve the target in this midterm plan, we also had uh, many different lessons from the marketing activities. And we analyzed them, and this will be a great asset for the coming net midterm. So with such recaps on the current midterm and the counter action coming from them, we will again try to grow share on ROV in the coming midterm. We will introduce a new platform model to meet the customer values to expand the market share in ROV market, which are growing. So we will try to set the target, which could, we could not meet this midterm, the 14% market share in a recreational segment. Next is the MC Motorcycle ASEAN business, which is the core business again in these coming three years. So we saw the huge growth in our products among the new mid-segment in ASEAN market. And also in ASEAN market, which is in maturing phase, uh, we capture the Philippine market opportunities which are growing, uh, which allowed us to grow scooter products. So we came out to be a quite positive midterm. So we address the following three themes. First, by using a brand and strong with uh, products which are strong among the middle uh, customers, we will uh, build a, a segment with a very strong earnings base. And then secondly, within these maturing ASEAN countries, we will optimize the factories throughout the whole ASEAN and manage them as virtual large factory because we were able to implement a platform system since we started last midterm. And also we have this supply management with more supplementary relationships, which could be all shifted over to the next stage. And number three, so now we will be fully uh, participating into the mobility new economy which came out to surface in ASEAN countries, uh, sharing taxes and finance. Um, so we see new markets and players uh, based on automobile and motorcycles. So we will try to create values to match uh, such market and participate in them. Through such activities, we intend to uh, reach 1.2 million yen for the total volume for Yamaha within ASEAN uh, mid-layer segment. This will be pretty much 30% of the total ASEAN sales. So we want to build a which uh, uh, the strong uh, Yamaha segment where we are strong at. And next, I want to also touch on India in the emerging markets. In this midterm, 
the volume did not、uh, go well along with the plan in India market、uh, because the growing scooter segment, compared to the competitor models,、uh, we uh, our products had a, a smaller displacements, and we went through a very you know various feature update competition, and we、uh, remained inferior in. In terms of specification against the others, ended up、uh, losing our market share. Under such conditions, in the future market, we need to understand、uh, what is the strengths that we can win over them, and what is the Maha brand expected by the customers. So,、uh, based on the results of this midterm, we will rebuild、uh, the business、uh, base and also the branding in this market. And we will build the Yamaha network by using our land mobility as the strengths to develop new areas. There are three themes here. The first is while increasing the market supply volume, enhancing efficiency, and fully utilizing our current capacity in order to achieve 1.2 million domestically and including the export 1.5 million units as the total production capacity. Secondly, to reinforce competitiveness of our scooter segment, we will introduce the global platform and enjoy its effect globally. Thirdly, in India, we aim to create land mobility synergies, including alliance opportunities. As future target of business, as India is a growing market, so its domestic sales growth is our first priority. We are targeting to increase the number by 50% to 1.2 million units. Lastly, I would like to report to you on our SPV business, mainly on the power-assisted bicycles. In this midterm, in Europe, e-kit business has been strong. However, in the Japanese market. Mainly pass model, the bicycle with child seating device were not as planned. However, as the research shows that this whole market size would double by 2030, for sure it's a growing market. Looking at this Aikuma Motor Show in Europe, many power-assisted bicycles were exhibited next to motorcycles. As the advanced mobility of electrification, the market is now further booming. Under such circumstances, for the next midterm theme to expand the business globally, we will expand the strategic partnership while updating technology for new product development, including peripheral areas to create the total value. As of today, with complete vehicle, OEM e-kit supplies, those making a Flexible business style as our strategy to approach each market. From now on, using Yamaha brand synergies, we will continually take the most appropriate approach to each market. For the SPB business, next three-year mid-term、uh, plan was backcasted from the ten-year long-term plan. In the ten-year long-term plan, our target is to achieve top line of 100 billion yen. Based on that. The next midterm target is sales volume of 760,000 units and the sales of 50 billion yen. In the next midterm, Europe, Japan, and the U.S. are the priority regions. For for the U.S. as、uh, our new region among them, we are now working on to establish a new business model. In the long run, as said before, including hero cycles. Represented by India, we will challenge to create a new region and segment, such as uh, and uh, offer a total value in SPV business. As I said before, for us it is an important growth segment, and for the future mobility electrification of vehicles, we can leverage our experience of providing large volume of batteries, packs, and、uh, motor units. Including electrification of vehicles and peripheral services, this business is becoming increasingly more important as a business case. We can look forward to its future development with so much potential. This concludes my land mobility presentation. Now let me turn to explain about our marine business. 
in our marine business with sales of 374 billion yen and operating profit of 76 billion yen, we will maintain this highly profitable standing while evolving the business model toward further growth. In the next midterm plan, with the strong sales of outboard motors, we will review our global production layouts to increase the production capacity. Next is to further evolve the system supplier strategy, the theme of the current midterm for growth of the expansion of the integrated marine business strategy. As for product development, we continue to provide attractive products and services. I will explain the, our long-term vision at the end. As the top brand of marine industry, we are to evolve the business by providing reliable and rich marine life towards further increasing value of ocean. First, let me tell you about the global production layout of our outboard motors. As I said before, sales of the large-sized motors are continually strong. The left bottom graph shows the ch changes in large outboard motor demands in North America and Europe. Demands for large horsepower motors has grown greatly, in particular over 200 horsepower models. The right graph shows the sales mix of propulsion units in North America. As you see, in board and the stern drive propulsion units that were equipped on large size boats have been replaced by outboard motors. This trend is expected to continue, so the demand for large outboard motors will remain strong. With this, we will reorganize the global production layout of outboard motors. Currently, we have three factory scheme with Yamaha Motor Company's headquarters, Yamaha Kumamoto Products, and Tai Yamaha Motor Company. They will be positioned for large, medium, and small motor production facilities, respectively, and production to be shifted as necessary. On top of this, production flexibility will be enhanced, specifically through the supplemental and the parallel production among these three sites, in order to quickly and flexibly respond to market changes. Now let me show with you the direction of the mid to long term strategy for marine business. In the current mid term, we have been working on the system supplier strategy, shifting from focusing on po propulsion units to propulsion systems, including peripheral devices, we aimed to provide more reliable boats to our customers. In the next midterm, we will further evolve this strategy and by establishing our core technology, expand the peripheral equipment business. In the long term, through development of the next generation steering system, the company aims to introduce higher value added systems such as automatic operations, providing reliable and rich marine life. We are determined to shift our business focus from making products to providing services and experiences. This is a schematic view of the business strategy translated into our product development strategy. This year, our flagship model, Large Salon Cruiser Exalt 43, was launched. Also, the large horsepower of 425 as a conventional outboard model was introduced. In addition to this, we improved this lineup of steering system to materialize the system supplier strategy. From now, aiming to automatic operation, we will work on development of the next generation steering system and electric propulsion system. By providing systems for different usages, smart packages will be structured to make boats to be higher value added products. Marine business will continue to supply more attractive products and services. Last but not least, let me share with you our long-term vision of marine business. The marine business provides reliable and rich marine life and evolves itself toward further increasing the value of the ocean, changing marine culture, changing everyday life. We create time, space, and experience to inspire people and permeate marine culture as the light of daily life. Connecting the sea, people, and the society, we will become an inevitable platform for society that connects people and marine value of the world. Toward the future with a greater ocean than the current one of today, as all involved in marine life 
hope, we perpetuate blessings of beautiful ocean, releasing the secret potential of the sea. Through thorough knowledge of sea of the world, we create values to contribute to the human development. Our marine business provides reliable and rich marine life and evolve itself to further increase value of the ocean. This concludes my presentation on, on marine business. Now I would like to cover our robotics business. Here I would like to explain the priority measures for robotics area in the next midterm plan. During the current midterm of three years, both revenue and profit steadily grew. In the next midterm, we will further increase the size of business and domains while enhancing profitability. Specifically, targeting to achieve top line of over 100 billion yen and ROS of 26%. By business segment, with a wide range of customer base and uh, with growth potential of surface mounter of automotive and power models, SMT, with rapid growth of market and wide range of applications, industrial robots, FA, with unmanned helicopters and drones with expanding usages, UMS. Each segment we are aiming to grow. While increasing automation of factories, but not limited to factories, we will contribute to mitigate issues of shortage of labor. As our growth strategy, we have targets in each area with core value of labor saving and autonomy. First and foremost, in existing products and markets, we will enhance our solutions to increase our value provided to customers. Concretely, through platform strategy, hardware and software will be commonized for higher efficiency of manufacturing and consolidating development capabilities to refine facility performances. For customers, this will lead to better facility cost effectiveness, reduction of maintenance cost, and standardization and simplification of work, and shorter lead time of equipment delivery. These are values we can provide to our customers. Always well-received automotive applications, strength of dealing with variable volume and types, and mechanism to secure traceability and quality will be further enhanced for expansion. The SMT peripheral areas will also be expanded. Further, into the existing market, new products and services will be introduced to optimize the entire factory, including robots as co-worker by increasing variations of products. We will enhance usability at each site. As a total solution supplier, we can uniquely offer M2M coordination leading to improved functionality and the function improvement remote support autonomous control in order to realize non-stopping autonomous production line without defects to optimize the entire factory. In the new area of business, using the agricultural insights and network from UMS, we expand the business to precision farming. For medical area, such as cell handler, we will work on introduction of robotics. Other than this, deploying our core technologies, unmanned ground vehicles, UGV, will, will be launched to logistics segment to provide our solutions. For this purpose, we need to refine internal manufacturing technology and enhance production sales engineering scheme altogether. Let me show you some more ex examples. For optimization of the entire factory, incorporating human wisdom and insights into AI, realize a factory in which as if excellent production engineers and maintenance engineers are working there. Through thorough 
visualization. We provide support to optimize production planning, replenishment support, and maintenance plan using mobile devices and automation of implant distribution by AGV and through intensive labor reduction, we aim to materialize autonomous factory. In logistics, for example, transportation of agricultural products by UGV or transporting heavy objects by an unmanned helicopter to high voltage iron tower, which is difficult to reach by vehicles, we will offer solutions to such troubles in the society. In agriculture, tacking work that is lagging behind in terms of automation, or in medical area, selection and transfer of cells are the areas we are going to tackle. As was said before, to introduce those products and services, we will further enhance the business base in-house manufacturing technology, for example, using AI, contact picking of bulk parts. This requires machine vision, where we use technologies that we have developed in SMT business and work on integrating AI with vision. Motor technology is represented by linear motor and the control technology of them have been internally developed so far. They will be further strengthened to refine performance and uh, enhance cost competitiveness. As for autonomous technology, autonomous flight of helicopter has already been started but that technique will be applied to drones, UGVs, and the UWVs to polish strong technology for the fields. For this goal, as we opened one in Yokohama this year, R&D centers will be expanded and enhanced, and this is to strengthen our human resources. For production and procurement, we work on organization enhancement and efficiency improvement as the, at the same time. Of course, we cannot keep up changes in the world if we internally develop everything, so the company is ready to take advantage of alliance opportunities with external parties. In addition to those I mentioned, we keep challenging new businesses. As our president said at the beginning, the main target of the company's growth strategy investment is robotics business. As of today, it is premature to disclose specifics, but to realize non-linear growth, we are determined to invest strategically to grow our business significantly. We will live up to your expectation. Thank you very much for your attention.